I would like to bring this meeting of the school committee to order and ask all of you to join me in a pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As our viewers know that we always, we generally start our meetings at 7 o'clock. We are starting a half an hour early this evening so we can go into executive session. We have matters pertinent to collective bargaining that we need to address in executive session. So I, the chair would entertain a motion at this point for the purposes of going into executive session to discuss matters relative to collective bargaining, Mrs. Burgess. Yeah, I'm, I'll move then. Mrs. Burgess so moves. Is there a second? And Ms. Hunt is the second. And let's now uh, take a roll call vote. Ms. Tricelli. You vote to go in? Yes. And? Yes. And yes. Yes. And chair votes yes? Yes. Yes. And Mr. Bacon. Everybody has voted in favor of executive session. Uh, I hope the executive session will be over by 7 o'clock so we can resume our meeting on time. Uh, thank you very much. I'd like to bring this meeting back to order. We had started at 6.30. We had to go into executive session. It. We have finished that. And now we can continue with our agenda which is, is there anybody attending tonight's meeting who isn't already on the agenda who would like to speak to the committee? I'm seeing no hands, so I can move off that agenda item and move to our student representatives. And Megan, we can start with you. All right. Hello to everyone. Um, congrats to the Plymouth High School Band on their successful trip to Orlando, performing in both the Citrus Parade and Disney's Magic Kingdom New Year's Eve Parade. The Plymouth North and South Winter Captains um, breakfast will take place Wednesday at 8.30 at Plymouth South. Mid-year exams begin this Friday, and students will take two exams in the morning each day through January 18th, and there will be a half day next Friday on the 19th. Second, close, or second term closes on January 19th, and report cards will be ma mailed home on January 26th. Students will receive their second semester schedules on Friday, January 19th in their last period class. 80 new National Honor Society members will be inducted on Thursday, January 18th. The ceremony begins at 6.30 in the Performing Arts Center, and there will be appetizers and desserts in the cafeteria after. The annual marketing DECA district competition was postponed last week due to the storm and has been rescheduled for February 1st and 2nd at the Marriott in Quincy. South will take on North in boys ice hockey next Wednesday, January 17th at Armstrong. The puck drops at 5.30. Finally, a big thank you to all the South custodians for their hard work to remove the snow and ice from the storm last week. Okay, thank That's you, all. Ed. Thank you. Plymouth North High School's academic program orientation will be held on Tuesday, January 30th at 6.30 p.m. During the open house, parents and current eighth grade students that will attend North in the fall will be given a tour of the building, receive an academic overview from the department heads, <clears throat> be introduced to the Freshman Academy, and learn about, their cl learn about clubs and sports offered. See you there. Plymouth, North Hi Plymouth High School's local scholarship application is available through the student's Naviance account. The deadline is February 1st. Late applications will not be accepted. All seniors are encouraged to apply. Mid Midterm exams will begin on Friday, January 12th, and will end on Thursday, January 18th. Makeup exams will be held on Friday, January 19th. First semester will end. Um, grades will close on Friday, January 19th. The second semester will begin on Monday, January 22nd. Due to the last week's storm, the DECA district competition being held in Quincy was postponed. The new date for the competition will be Thursday, February 1st and Friday, February 2nd. Just a reminder, students exceeding five unexcused absences <clears throat> in a term will lose credit. All documentation for absences is due when a student returns to school and no later than five days after a student's return. Ac attendance appeals will be, uh, for the first semester will be held on January 16th, January 18th, and January 19th. Please call Mrs. Follett no later than Friday, January 12th by 2 p.m. in the main office to schedule an appointment. Winter athletics are in full swing and we encourage you to come out and support the Eagle student athletes. Game dates and times are posted on our athletic website. Report cards will be distributed on Friday, January 26th. All students will arrive home from their report cards that day. 
The sale of cap and gowns will begin on February 1st and run, and run through February 16th. Orders can be placed before or after school in Miss Allen's room, room 333. The cost is $25, check or money order only, made payable to PNHS SAF. Please join us for our Plymouth North Winter a cappella concert on Friday, January 12th at 7 p.m. Tickets can be purchased at pnhs-sings.com or at the door. The evening will feature performances by Ithaca College's all-women a cappella group Premium Blend, along with Northern Lights, Menergy, and Girl Trouble. Poetry Out Loud is returning to PNHS. This is our second year participating in this national competition. Poetry Out Loud encourages students to learn about great poetry through memorization and reciting. As students explore and perform poems, they develop and strengthen their interpretation, public speaking skills, build self-confidence, and deeper, deepen their understanding for our rich literacy heritage. This competition begins in English classrooms and is followed by a school-wide competition, which will take place on January 29th at 7 p.m. in the Plymouth North Learning Commons. There are approximately 20 students who have done well enough in their classroom recitations to present their poems to our school competition. Each student must memorize and recite two poems. The students are graded on poise, accuracy, understanding, and articulation, and voice. Our school winner will continue on to the Cape Cod Regional Contest in March. Ariana Bremis was our school champion last year. We wish to thank all Plymouth North families for completing the NASDAQ survey. We have reached our quota of responses, which will allow us to continue in our self-study in preparation for our decennial accreditation. Okay, both of you, thank you very much. A lot of information you bring to the table that's appreciated. Your reference to caps and gowns must make a lot of people smile. <laughs> <laughs> it seems so, wow, it's coming on so quickly. Looking forward to that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, committee members, any references to old business at this point? Ms. Hunt. Um, I just had a question about the videos for the MCAS. I know that's on there for old business. Um, I, I just didn't know. I know that we were going to talk to it. I know it's coming up closer Yeah, and closer. we're doing a series of videos through every department. So we're actually doing a um, 12 video series um, through not just English language arts and math, but science, social studies, visual and performing arts, student support services. So we actually met with Mr. Riley this morning my team about, about that. It's an extensive, extensive project that really needs his time, his team's time. Um, so it is in the works and we'll be releasing them this year. So mm -hmm. I can't give you a definitive date, but I can tell you that they're all in the works. Um, mm -hmm. It'll involve um, interviews from various curriculum coordinators, parents, students, former students will be um, doing these videos. So it should be a really good, a really good um, highlight uh, once it's done. So it's going to cover everything, not just MCAS or MCAS. It's going to really go, really get into the curriculum okay. deeper All right. to talk about what we offer as opposed to just the test itself. If we want to do something just for what the test looks like, we could certainly do that, but um, I thought we'd do something a little more extensive. Okay. Thank you. Any other matters to old business? Okay, how about new business, committee members, new business to bring up? I had something on old business. Oh, great. Oh, thank you. Um, I know we did have um, information regarding safe routes to school, and there was a request uh, that was made by the committee to get information regarding the schools that have actually gone through a safe routes to school um, audit. We actually have five schools that have um, entered into uh, work with uh, the safe routes to school or the old colony planning council, and uh, we have federal furnace. Hedge Elementary School, Manamet Elementary, Nathaniel Morton, and Plymouth South High School went through an extensive um, uh, review by Old Colony Planning Council in the design of uh, the new campus at Plymouth South High School. So we have five schools that uh, did enter into uh, an audit with uh, that process. Okay. Thank you. I forgot that um, when I mentioned the school zone flashing lights, I, I forgot to mention at South Elementary, they also need a crosswalk. It hasn't been redone. So if we were talking about that, if you can just add that crosswalk in. Thank you. Not that there's that many students that walk. Let's go. Yeah, we, we yeah. can. Yeah. <laughs> Once um, 
I, I will let the Department of Public Works know and see what they can do, um, timeline-wise, weather and so on. We'll of course, we'll yeah. see what they can do. Okay. Anything else under old business? Okay. Is there any new business from the committee to members to put on the table? Reports and proposals from the superintendent. Dr. Maestas. Yes, I have a few items to report on tonight. Uh, just as a reminder to the school committee that I will um, not be in district next week. I, I will be in the Dominican Republic uh, building a, um, a cafeteria at a school in, uh, in a community near Costanza, Dominican Republic, which I understand that it's just a couple of miles away from the community where the students at Plymouth North uh, are working so um, that's pretty ironic how it just happens to be really close to uh, where the school is that our kids have been working before so um, Dr. Campbell will be uh, in charge while I'm away um, and will be um, running the next school committee meeting so he's saying that there's no snow days at all because we're not happy we're not having snow um, so kids out there contact him <laughs> The uh, China Immersion Program, I just wanted to let everyone know that we are running two information sessions coming up for our uh, potential parents and host families, uh, Tuesday, January 16th at PCIS here at the Little Theater at 7, at, excuse me, 6 p.m. And on Thursday, January 18th at Plymouth South Middle School in the Lecture Hall, um, and that'll be from 5 to 6. So we have uh, quite a few events going on there in the district, and we're trying to fit these in. But if you're interested in hosting a uh, student for a short-term stay or a long-term stay, uh, we are inviting parents to go and listen to uh, this opportunity. And as well, there will be information presented on the opportunity for uh, high school students from north or south to travel to China in April, April 13th to the 21st. So that information will be shared uh, that evening. And, and hopefully, um, there, are, there are parents that would like uh, to either Post or learn more about the program. I think that would be a great opportunity for you to do that. Uh, social media advertise this um, today, and um, we'll have uh, a call going out that will actually promote this as well. Um, just a calendar um, item for the school committee. Uh, we're doing the um, grand opening of the planetarium, and just to let you know that we are planning on doing uh, the uh, grand opening at 5.30. Um, actually, Ms. Dargi, is it 5.30? I have 5.30. I'll give you the date. It's on the 30th of this month, and uh, we will send you information as to the specific time that we have the school committee scheduled. Uh, we have a presentation uh, for different groups, stakeholder groups in, in the district, uh, but we want the school committee to have the first viewing of this uh, marvelous planetarium and you can see the capabilities uh, full, fully set up. But we, you did have an opportunity this summer to take a look at it, but it is ready to go and I think you'll be fascinated by the capabilities of uh, the planetarium. So keep in mind the 30th of the month, we'll give you a specific time via email so you can be ready for that. Um, also snow days, just want everybody to know that uh, um, we, we did have two snow days last year, as, as you are aware. Um, we, we really uh, do not call snow days the night before. I thought it was important for our families to prepare. Uh, it was pretty certain that we were going to get hit. Um, unfortunately, we got a significant amount of rain, which caused a lot of the icing on Friday. Um, you know, it's a toss-up between a, a foot to 16 inches of snow or a lot of rain and a little bit of snow, but a lot of ice. So uh, thank you to our parents and our students for patience. Um, just the, the sidewalks just this afternoon were, were breaking up a little bit from all that coating of ice on, on the sidewalks. Uh, we landed up faring very, very well in our schools. As school committee does know via communications from me, we did have a couple of uh, issues at Indian Brook. We had a, a sprinkler to let go uh, very briefly, and that was, that was taken care of. Uh, we actually had Madman Elementary had a number of, of small pipe um, breaks um, and, and those were repaired and we didn't miss any time in school. Uh, once again, thank you to um, our staff, our, our district plumber who, who went in very quickly and repaired all these issues and our custodial staff for getting into these buildings. 
and just cleaning up and just getting school ready to, to, to go. But I think the credit goes to uh, Mr. Costin and, and Mr. Montron for being very proactive and, and we ran heat uh, through that really um, long cold snap. We ran heat um, 24 hours um, and we had building checks three hours in the morning, three hours in the, in the late afternoon to make sure that our buildings were, were gonna be monitored throughout that really long snap. And fortunate we had minimal, minimal impact. So I just want you to know that. And I just wanted to announce that I was in Florida where the, where the uh, ban was at Disney and I made my way to Disney in the morning to see the band, and I'm three and a half miles in a traffic jam on the road to Disney, and I was at a dead standstill it, until about 10.30, I got a notice that uh, Disney had closed. They had closed the gate, and they were not letting anyone in. So 3.1 three miles away, I did a U-turn and went back to where I was staying. But I understand that our, our students did exceptionally well at the, at the uh, parade. They were the first band that went through, uh, but it was very quick. Um, but I did hear from some parents today that they really enjoyed uh, our students' performance. Um, and it was a, a very, very busy uh, trip for our students, but they did a phenomenal job. So just want to give you that report. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Dr. Maestas on his report? Okay, correspondence, Mr. Morgan. Uh, there is no correspondence this evening. Okay. Okay, so now we're up to our first uh, mid-cycle update uh, of this new uh, calendar year. Uh, Dr. Maestas. Yes, this evening we're honored to have West Elementary and the school council here to present their mid-cycle report, school improvement plan. So at this point, I'd like to welcome Principal Williams and his school council to join us at the table and uh, they can prepare. They brought uh, a number of um, articles to, to demonstrate the, along with their uh, school spirit and they all seem to be wearing the, the West uh, regalia and um, if they don't have it on, they have red to represent the school colors. So welcome Mr. Williams uh, and welcome school council to the school committee. Hello, good evening. Uh, thank you so much for seeing us. Uh, Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, I'm very excited to be here. This is, I'm embarking on my fifth year at the principal, as the principal of West Elementary School. Uh, very proud of our, of our institution of learning for our students. I'd like to briefly introduce our uh, presenters this evening. Andy Young, third grade teacher. Tiara Spooner, PTA president. Christy Maloney, a moderate special needs teacher at West. Nicole Costa, parent representative. Rick Kelly, parent representative. Christy Ann Eldridge, parent representative. Heather Mento, a para at West and a representative, and myself. So um, we're gonna try to give you a very uh, concise, uh, updated, uh, specific report this evening speaking to where we're at through our report and where we stand with our goals that we set. This plan is due to expire next year in 2019. So um, we have color-coded our presentation this evening. Uh, green means we are on target and exceeding the goals. Yellow means we are partially meeting that goal with some work to be done. And red means we are not there yet. So um, I'm very pleased to present this to you this evening. And feel free to ask questions as we proceed. Um, before we do begin, I would like to thank uh, our members here this evening, as well as the West community at large. Uh, truly, the PTA is outstanding. They've been so supportive with all of our goals and initiatives. And uh, my colleagues here tonight at, at the council have been very helpful. So thank you. Uh, Mr. Young, I'll hand it off to you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Good evening. Our first goal aligns directly to district improvement plan goal, which is to increase academic achievement for all students. Um, Thinking about academic achievement for all students, we're thinking about how do we assess students, how do we use that data to drive instruction, how do we teach, how do we um, intervene both ahead of time as well as throughout the learning process for students, and how do we continue to develop our teachers and our staff so that we're continuing to improve um, using our variety of tools and resources within the district. Thinking about um, 
how we can start to improve our school. Last year we talked a little bit about going out to other schools and making sure that we're doing what's best within the district as well as other schools. Beyond just our administration going to other schools this year through instructional rounds, we also have our staff that will be beginning uh, writing workshop instructional rounds. They're going to be monitoring and going into partnering with other teachers and going into other classrooms to see what instruction techniques and um, tools they're using in their classrooms so we can continue and improve. We have a variety of meetings that we're continuing to set up. Thinking about assessments overall, uh, we have Title I services within our building, but we're also using a number of assessment tools that are both um, at the district level as well as within our uh, school. We have, uh, Mr. Williams has some pocket charts to talk about how we're using data within West to drive instruction, so we'll talk a little bit about that later on. Uh, going down this list a little bit further, you can see, as Mr. Williams talked about, we are meeting our goals for, for this year. That doesn't mean that we've met them. Those are ongoing goals. So all of these continue to go on throughout the year on this particular chart. We have a number of professional development opportunities. So one of the things that our school does really well is to utilize the coaches, uh, the curriculum coaches within the district to make sure that, again, we're tapping into the knowledge that they have and they're helping us uh, to improve our instruction within the building. Uh, and making sure that we're aligned with, with what they're using and, and doing throughout the other schools through our bi-weekly PLC meetings and also through RTI blocks. And those are specific instructional um, hours that we use. So each grade level is doing RTI across, um, again, across the grade levels so that we can put small groups together and think about what are the specific needs of our children and making sure that Again, the kids can learn not just from their uh, homeroom teacher, their classroom teachers, but the other resources within the building. Going on to the next slide. Um, this is thinking about, again, technology is a continued push and a, and a priority within West. Uh, we've done a lot with technology over the last few years. We've purchased iPads. We've purchased Apple TV. Um, this year, uh, Mrs. Spooner will talk a little bit about our next purchase with Chromebooks. But continuing to use technology to drive instruction as well. Data, as I kind of prefaced before, is very important for every school. We use data constantly in our school. And this year, we're taking the next step of not just using the data but to drive, to drive instruction, but to think about how we can use it as a communication tool. And not just thinking about it horizontally across each grade level um, so that teachers within, say, a third grade classroom are talking to the classroom next to us about how we're driving instruction using that data horizontally. But this year, we're making it a priority to think vertically. To, so to think about how does a student in second grade need to, what, what specific skills and, and background do they need to be prepared for third grade? What third grade students, what students they, do they need, um, excuse me, to move into fourth grade? Um, so thinking a lot more vertically as well as the horizontal collaboration. And then finally, thinking about uh, beyond just classroom experiences for children, what before school activities can we provide for children to make sure that they're really enriching their entire academic um, initiatives at the school. So we have French Club, um, which has done a lot of work, not just in the building, but also with other schools within the district. We have uh, math clubs and, and a number of other great clubs for the, for the kids to, again, enhance their overall experience. Before you move on, uh, Mr. Young, Mr. Williams said, ask a question as we go along. So let me ask the question. And it, it, it sort of, if you have a conversation today with a second grader or a third grader or fourth grader and a topic comes up and they'll say, well, let me check, and they'll, and, they'll, and they'll Google it right away and they'll get themselves an answer right away. Is that good for education or is that not good for education? I think it's good I, I, because, number one, it's a skill that they're going to need to have. Um, being able to answer questions is obviously what the objective is. However, we can't just give that to children in isolation. We can't give them to devices to have them solve problems for them. Children have to be able to think. They have to be able to analyze what the question is actually asking, and they need to be able to problem solve. And if a device is going to do that for them, then we're missing the mark. We need to be able to allow children access to those tools so that they can get answers, but they need to be able to come up with the answers themselves. And so technology can assist with it, but it cannot 
replace the ability to problem solve. And that's precisely why I asked the question, because to the child, it solves the problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, it can. And, and again, that's, that's where, that's why teachers are so important. Again, you're talking about people. And what we have to always remember is that there's no replacement for people. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot more to academics and learning than just finding an answer. And one of the things that our district really emphasizes is the fact that kids need to be able to, again, think through everything, but also be able to use and apply that information beyond just that simple answer. They need to be able to apply it further to their next challenge. And they're going to learn if they're not just finding the answer in one way. They're going to learn if they're then if they're taking that answer and experimenting, if they're taking that answer and applying it within a book they read, or they're making a connection from one text to another text. So beyond just getting the answers, really our role as educators is to make them think a little bit more deeply about not just getting an answer, but finding how to get answers. Okay, thank you. If I could just piggyback on that briefly. So one of the tasks that we have as educators, as Mr. Young said, is it's great that they have a resource to find the answer, but on our state district exams now, the assessments, it's, it's higher order thinking. So you have to prove, you can't just say two times three is six. You have to explain through multiple steps how you arrived at that answer. That's where I think the value comes, per Mr. Young's point, of the educator giving multiple strategies to the students. All right, so I'm gonna um, continue with goal one, and I'm just gonna finish up on the last part of it. And I'm gonna talk about how professional development opportunities for staff helps increase academic achievement of all students, with um, one of the items being increased reading recovery, Wilson reading, and LLI training for all SPED teachers. Um, also, symphony math and first steps professional development. Um, then monthly technology co um, coaching also helps increase academic achievement. And um, training with literacy consultants, that's something that they do a lot. Um, also the staff uses PLC time to review the data wall to plan for future instruction in tiered intervention. And again, tonight we have um, a, an example of that that Mr. Williams will show you after we get through um, our goals. And then um, some of the budget implications would be um, purchasing materials and resources, especially for differentiated instruction. Also, um, keeping technology updated. Um, last year when we were here at this meeting, I talked about how we needed um, 25 new Chromebooks and a new Chromebook cart for our last pod in the school that didn't have access to that. And um, someone, a brilliant um, third grade teacher, came up with a great idea. Each of the carts in each of the three pods had an excess of computers. So if we took five from each computer, five from each cart, and combined them, we're going to get a whole new cart without having to spend $10,000 on a new cart. So the PTA is willing to give the money for the new cart, and we're just going to put the old computers in there. So now we have um, another whole cart for the pod. So that was a brilliant idea, and it saved money on the budget, and um, we got to get what we wanted. <laughs> and so that was the brilliant idea. And um, so we're also um, increased literacy and math software. That's also a big help for, um, again, getting to the point with um, the students for academic achievement. And then um, professional development for staff. That's so important because it's always new and exciting things that the staff learns and can <laughs> relate back to the classroom. And then finally, um, to increase the academic achievement of all students, um, it would be to have access to more texts across levels and genres to support um, the Lucy Calkins workshop units. Good evening. I'm going to go over goal two now. Um, I have four pages, so please bear with me. <laughs> um, if you look at the slide, you'll notice that um, we have met the use of Remind 101, which is a text notification used for communication. So you have the parents sign up for it. 
And then you can text them reminders of field trips or things that this, their um, child would need for school. Um, so it is used by you know, all the teachers for school and clubs themselves. If you also look at, we have some um, literacy and math resources that we have used um, that are online resources. Um, the Reading A to Z, Lexia and Storia, um, those are also used across grade level, and Sympathy, Symphony Math, Extra Math, um, EDM <coughs> Online, and First Steps. Um, First Steps is not an online program, but it is an initiative to um, help uh, the students who are struggling in the classroom and to find out where they are. Um, and these these programs are used also to drive some of our instruction for RTI, like Mr. Young said. Um, we can go online, we can see what the child is struggling with, and then we can determine our groups and focus on where that child needs are, and hopefully we can try to fill in those gaps that they have. If you go on to the next page, um, this one is, um, we have bi-monthly staff workshops and presentations that will use technology. Um, our computer tech person is wonderful and she'll go over and she'll supply some tra training for the Google Classroom or blogs um, and that's ongoing. We also, um, you know, like I said, we have those trainings during staff meetings and we also have, she has tech time that she has um, available for the staff and that's again ongoing. And then um, we're also having training and prep for the MCAS 2.0 which is now online. Um, so that will be starting up pretty soon, and again, that's you know, partially met, but that will still be an ongoing, ongoing training also to make sure we're you know, ahead of what they want us to do, and so we can have the students ready to take the MCAS 2.0 and not be stressed out about it. Um, if you go to the third slide, again, it's the more um, availability and use of technology throughout West. Um, so um, we did meet the, um, the purchase of more learning apps for the iPads for the students to use to, again, go ahead and explain their thinking. Um, so they'll click on to a certain um, app, which might be explain everything, and if they you know, have to explain a math pro problem, they can actually write the math problem and then talk into it, explaining how they solved it. Um, you see now a lot of it is explain your thinking. So it's not just like Mr. Williams said, two plus three anymore. It's how did you get to that point? And so those apps definitely help um, with those. We also partially met the reading challenge with virtual classrooms this past year. We were involved in the Heifer project and we raised money to help under, um, families in undeveloped countries purchase um, farm animals and things to help them survive. And Mr. Williams milked a goat. <laughs> mm. um, you will also see that we partially met the availability, the meeting of um, a repository for lesson plans. We do that through um, Google Drive, which you can share anything with your colleagues. And we're also in the fall of 2018 gonna start using an e-plan book, which everyone has access to. Um, so that's partially met. We also met, um, partially met the um, running list of literacy and math websites that can be used during the math and reading workshops and also that can be used at home. And we're also partially met um, creating before and after technology clubs. Um, I do, we, we do have one, the coding club, but that's um, the only one we're using, we have right now. So we are still in the process of, you know, setting up more for the, these students. And if you go on our last page, just some of the budget implications for this goal. Um, so of course we were able to just purchase a charging station um, through the PTA. <clears throat> Excuse me, again, sophomore to support the literacy and math initiatives, Lexia, Symphony Math, and Storia, and then technology workshops for the staff members. Do you have any questions? Great, thank you. thank you. All right, our third goal is around enhancing the well-being of West students through staff skill building and further developing a positive school culture. As you can see, we're all wearing our West gear, which is part of that. It was, a, I made it up as a joke and then they all thought it took it seriously. We all wore it, so it was good. Um, yes, it was great. 
So part of our goals with that is to increase literacy support. Um, we are meeting that goal, continued support through McBride, Learning, LaCroix, White. Um, increase math support. So we have our continued coaching support, scheduled PLCs, and want to highlight our math night. Um, we do an annual math night. I want to say this is the third, fourth, or fifth year of doing it. The fourth year. And I've been attending all four years. And I was joking about it to the to the team, um, it creates a lot of anxiety for me because it's so well attended. There are so many people, so many families come. And when you have multiple kids who go to school, um, all of the tables are designed for the different age groups, the different grades. And there are different math games that they play as a family. And it's really fun for the kids and then the parents are all like frazzled. <laughs> but it's really fun. It's a really fun <laughs> night and the kids learn a lot. Um, and it's good. It's a good team building, family time to get the West families together and work with the students around math skills. So it is really fun. Um, response to intervention, tier two instructional blocks. Um, we still do the embedded RTI blocks. That's ongoing. We are meeting that goal at every grade level um, at least one or two times per week. Um, special education staff input, um, that is partially met. We're continuing to meet that goal, um, meeting to discuss modifications, accommodations, um, differentiation. And we have met the goal of physically relocating the teams um, in closer proximity at West, so having the grade levels together as long with life skills, um, and that really promotes a sense of culture amongst different grades. Um, on the next slide, um, we've had guest speakers. Um, we have not had guest speakers from outside of Plymouth Public Schools presenting, but that is a goal that we haven't met that we are working towards, um, having outside presenters. Um, staff members have presented to each other with new professional development training. So um, we've had staff present on life skills, on care, and on curriculum. Um, and we've had multiple curriculum coordinators present as well. That goal has been met. And then lastly, we've had team building activities amongst the grade levels, um, which is great, like trust falls off the top of the West Building. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but good <laughs> team building activities, which is great. So thank you. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> the next uh, slide, uh, to, um, it, again, goal number three, enhance the well-being of West students through staff building, skill building. Uh, there are 11 goals there. We, as you can see, we are, uh, have met or are meeting eight of those. Uh, the Westie branding, paw prints in the lobby, and banners, those have already been met. Um, this is a sample of our banners that are now on display in our parking lot. Fabulous, they're great. Yeah. Yeah, and the paw prints are great too. First time I thought I thought it was the Easter Bunny that, <laughs> yeah. but it was great. And uh, and then we have uh, the Nature's Classroom, which is unbelievable. If, if you get a chance to come over and see it for yourselves, it's it's fantastic. It really is. The kids love it, and um, the staff and the custodial people, Bobby, everyone has done a fantastic job. A lot of dedication to that, you know. Uh, the Westy Awards, uh, we continue with that, the bi-monthly. I just started subbing, if I could throw that in, and I was able to hand out a Westy Award. It was a lot of fun. The kids, I couldn't believe how they respond to the, the Westy Awards. It's, it's unbelievable. Every kid who gets called up, they go down the red carpet, and then they walk up the red carpet, and it's just, you know, it's kind of a, it's quite the sight, you know? Yeah. Um, so... Uh, we also have the, um, we're partially meeting three of them, the Respect, Responsibility, Kindness campaign. We continue it uh, with the PBIS initiative and the Westie Awards program. Uh, universal consistent language, bus to home, hallway specials, cafeteria, classroom, partially meeting those. And the other one is the second steps, the social competency program. Uh, we're working towards that. We're um, confident that we're going to be meeting those. and. Uh, if you have any other questions on that, you can ask me or Mr. Williams. Hi, I'm Christiane Eldridge, and I have four children, three of which are current Westies. And thank you for having us. I am just ending up slide three with the ongoing future initiatives. Um, last year we spoke about some of these, and I'm just going to update a little bit about what has happened. Uh, the the diversity events planned um, as part of the readathon, as mentioned earlier, we were part of the Heifer Foundation, was our big fundraiser that the children did the readathon in supporting. 
And we, I believe, will be doing that again this year. So it's an international organization which is giving our kids a lot of a lot more international exposure than I've seen in the past, so I was grateful to see that. Um, practicing safety procedures in collaboration with the Plymouth PD. We, I believe, got some good grades last time we had uh, our um, fire drills and things like mm -hmm. that, so we've got the A-OK -okay with that, and we are continuing um, something called ALICE training in February, which is a different technique of reacting to an intruder. So our staff will be working on that training with them. Um, practicing, uh, I mean, uh, field trips and virtual field trips. I spoke a little bit about that last year and just some updates with the French club. We were able to Skype with Plymouth North honor roll students. So that collaboration, I believe, to be invaluable for our students. And the virtual reality tours, I spoke a little bit about the I did around last year. Um, and they were able to do that, um, Skyping with people connected to the Iditarod. Um, and this year they're working with virtual reality national park tours, which I think is amazing. I've visited a lot of them and I hope that I'll be able to bring my children, but not everybody can. And that's, I think, a valuable experience for students to be able to see something like that um, in their classroom. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, we also will be doing the Read Across America Challenge during the month of March and continuing that this year. Um, I think the budget implications kind of speak for themselves. All of these extra things cost extra money. So um, I think those things will always be in place. Everything, you know, there's always, want, the more you want to do, the more money you need. So thank you. And I will... Um start us off with goal four. Um, I like to think of it as kind of like the fun goal. And um, being a parent and a staff member, I get to actually, I can speak to both aspects of the, the goal. Um, so some staff, in, uh, staff initiatives that have been happening, um, Mr. Williams sends out a weekly newsletter um, through email so we know what's coming up the week ahead, meetings that are happening, um, assemblies that are happening, changes in the schedule and whatnot, so we kind of have a <coughs> heads up. Um, we have a Sunshine Committee that um, promotes and uh, sponsors several um, fun staff um, events. We do a monthly breakfast. We have holiday luncheons. Um, before the holiday break, we had an ugly sweater day, um, which was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm also in the classroom, so I'm part of the cross grade level um, activities, which I think are some of the kids' most favorite things. Uh, we have Big Buddy and Little Buddies, um, where the kindergartners and the fifth graders are paired together. And the fifth graders, I think, are sometimes more excited than the kindergartners because um, they really like to, to go back down to kindergarten and work with those students. Um, we have uh, first and fourth grade classrooms working together, um, similar to Big Buddy, Little Buddy. We have book partners. Um, they have publishing parties, um, just a lot of cross. We have a peer mentoring um, group that goes and works with groups of students to help out in classrooms and that's made up of fifth graders. It just started its second session this week um, and my daughter's part of that and she enjoys it and loves it and is on our second round. So um, then from the family part of it, um, we receive a monthly newsletter, hard copy sent home. Um, which contains an update from Mr. Williams, important dates. There's also usually some bios um, featuring some, the teachers, like their background and their interests and where they come from. Uh, there's a PTA section. There's um, often a section from Nurse Marissa um, with you know health concerns or things that need to be um, communicated to family, uh, to families. Um, we uh, the school hosts several events. First grade does a garden event in the spring. Um, they also do Mother's Day tea. We host field day, uh, volunteer appreciation breakfast. We host a school-wide art exhibit, um, math night, which has already been spoken to, um, the fifth grade science fair. Um, if you've attended, I know some school committee members have attended in prior years. This year, I'm pretty confident the fifth grade team is changing it up, so it's going to look a little different. So make sure you come and check it out this year. Um, School Council, Nature's Classroom is coming along. It's beautiful. Um, in the spring, we plant flowers. The kids love to go out there and read. And we have a brand new weather station for the kids to check out. Um, Cribbage Club, uh, 
The talent show is a favorite event um, that's usually hosted in May. Um, and the talent at West always amazes me. And the fact that those kids can get up on the stage is like, takes my breath away every year. Um, PTA assemblies, we have um, visits from the Plymouth Philharmonic. <coughs> PTA hosts several outside events. Ice Cream Social is a big one that's held um, before school starts so we can come back together as a community and reconnect with old friends that we haven't seen over the summer, find out who's in whose class. Um, pajama Night, we just hosted in December, which is um, in conjunction with Scholastic Book. They, for every pair of pajamas we collect, Scholastic donates a book. Um, Enrichment Day, we have band and chorus concerts. Um, the kindergarten does a play. There's always um, learning celebrations, most a lot of them at the end of the year, but I know a few teachers have already hosted them already this year. Um, teachers versus fifth grade students, volleyball game. Um, we've had the school council that started a few years ago for fourth and fifth grade students. Um, and then some things that involve the community um, are the craft fair, which is the PTA's biggest fundraiser. And in the last two years, it has grown tremendously. Um, it's usually in November. If you haven't come before, you should come next November. Uh, it really has probably doubled in size in the last 12 years that I've been there. Um, and it's, it's a fun time. Um, and we have continuing tutor partnerships with Plymouth South. Um, those students come and work in our classrooms. Um, and they're inspiring educators. Um, so it's a win-win. We also have had several community readers come in. Um, we've had the Plymouth South football and cheerleaders came in the fall and read to the kids. Um, yep, and the Plymouth Pilgrims come in the spring, the baseball team. We also have had um, the soccer team come in the spring and read to the students. Um, and seeing that connection with the high school students, the, the students think that they're like famous. <laughs> <laughs> They, they, uh, they get to ask them questions and they ask them like all kinds of just crazy, you know, where do you live? <laughs> Who do you, do you have friends? <laughs> yeah, who's your favorite athlete? Um, and, and, the, and the high school kids handle it all very well. They, it, it's just a good win-win. Um, and as everything as you can see is we are meeting or have met. So the only last thing is that last slide is the um, <coughs> ways to expand, and we, I think we're still working on this, is holding more PTA events at varying times so we can include more <coughs> um, families and um, get higher participation. We need to um, hold some more curriculum nights um, and possibly invite more community members to come and see the artwork during um, the art show because it really is amazing. I work with the kindergartners, and every week I'm amazed at the art that they generate. Um, and we've also included community nights for nature's classroom. And uh, I will close out the, our presentation this evening. Um, before I discuss goal four, I do want to emphasize that in my uh, five year tenure at West, the uh, before and after school programs have exploded. Um, could we do more? Could we do better? Yes. But I'm really proud of the work we've done and it requires uh, volunteering um, from our staff. They don't get paid for these initiatives that we do for our children. So I just want to highlight that, that it takes a lot of um, person power and dedication to have those clubs organized and off the ground. So I have to acknowledge the West staff and parent volunteers. Um, the principal primary goals, so these are my performance goals um, that I meet with uh, Dr. Mastis every spring and we discuss these. Enhanced gifted and talented enrichment programs. We have done a good job, uh, as I mentioned. Um, we, c we also have built in the RTI, the response to intervention, uh, three-tiered instruction at West. We really, that's where the rubber hits the road, working with those kids that need an, an additional challenge, that need the extension activity. Um, we have continued with our math superstars. Our assistant principal, Stacy Perry, took on that initiative last year. Uh, we do need to do more work with the literacy leader program. Although having said that, uh, I work very closely, we, the staff and I work very closely uh, with Natalie LaCroix-White, uh, Kelly Learning, and Laura McBride. They are our literacy gurus uh, assigned to West School. 
for the second goal, uh, continuing the blog. So three years ago, I started a weekly blog that is updated on Weebly every Thursday. Uh, we do utilize our Facebook social media page. We update uh, things that are happening at West, our enrichment assemblies, uh, special projects, the Giving Tree, uh, Read Across America initiative. So we are utilizing uh, the Facebook platform at West to uh, communicate with our parents and families. The uh, data team, Mrs. Mento, may I borrow you for a moment? So I just wanted to quickly share with you one example of what we're doing at West with data. So uh, two summers ago, I thought that we, frankly, were not doing as good of a job as we could have with data work at West. So I took an online class that summer, um, data-driven instruction. And so we formed a data team at West with representative, uh, representatives uh, Jen Marciani from math, uh, Natalie LaCroix-White from literacy, an upper elementary teacher, middle and lower. And we really, uh, I think a lot of attention is paid to MCAS, as it should be. Um, that is, uh, that's our accountability measure to the state. But I also felt like we needed to go deeper and look more uh, strategically at our district assessments and get a comprehensive capture of where, what we're doing. So last year, we basically met and just started it. <laughs> And this year, in our second year of this, we're really going deeper with the data. So this is a uh, first grade sample. We collected this data in November. We will revisit our mid-year in February, and then we'll do our summative data at the end of the school year in May and June. But this is every student in first grade and the student population at West. This is anonymous data, so it's accessible to the teachers and the staff, but nobody knows how Johnny is performing on a certain day. And this captures the benchmarks for uh, literacy and comprehension scores. So as you can see, it's a quick visual. We're elementary folks, so the visual with a very simple red, yellow, green helps us to quickly ascertain where the kids are performing at a given time. This is an ongoing dynamic procedure. This is not something that stays locked in a drawer or a closet. It, it, we come out and we wheel these on carts, and we actually shuffle the cards, and as the kids progress, the obvious goal is at the end of the year to get the kids to green. So thank you, Heather. And every grade level has a pocket chart for math assessments and literacy assessments. And then um, the last goal that I was assigned to is the enhancement and improvement of West Elementary's Nature's Classroom. This is an aerial shot of Nature's Classroom. Greg Spooner, Tiara's husband, was gracious and kind enough to take this picture of our classroom last spring. It's even, I don't know if you can see it, but it's even grown and expanded more since this photograph has been taken. Uh, I have to give kudos and credit to our head custodian, Bobby Trepanier. He is really an engineer, <laughs> not, a, not a custodian. He is remarkable. And he has done tremendous work in getting this off the ground, as has our PTA. Um, every Every classroom has their own flower bed. They own it, they take responsibility for it, they plant, they weed, they water. Um, we, have a, we have picnic tables here, and on the side of uh, Nature's Classroom here, where you can see these, um, right here is where the weather station is. This is a fifth grade seating area, and we have a sign that was donated now last year to, by the um, graduating class for the PTA. So um, this is about 90% online. We have a few things left. We want to do an animal tracking station, but um, great growth and, and potential here at West. And again, I have to thank the community for their help with that. Thanks, Heather. And then my last slide is just, we recently, uh, we had to do, I felt that it was time that we did a survey and we reached out to our parents very specifically with specific questions about how we can improve our performance at West. We have perceptions that may or may not be reality. So um, I have to give credit to Mr. Young. He um, took this initiative and crafted this survey. Uh, we worked together on getting it out to the parents. It was a survey monkey. Um, we had overall over 120 families responded. It was 10 questions, and some of the questions you could break out with deeper analysis. These are the highlights of that survey, which I'm very proud and, and pleased to share with you. 
Um, initially, we had 118, and then we had to expand. I paid an additional fee on SurveyMonkey because the responses kept coming in. You get 120 free, I think, or 118, uh, 100 free. Anyway, 97% of our parents that responded feel that West is a welcoming place. 91% feel that West works well together to improve student achievement. 97% feel West staff treats their kids with respect. 98% feel West staff has a positive influence on their children. 96% feel West staff encourages accepting others' differences. 94% are very comfortable with their child's experience at West. So I'm very pleased with um, those, those metrics. Areas for improvement, 81% feel their child is challenged academically. Not bad, but room for growth. We, we can work on that. 70% um, are satisfied with extracurricular activities. So as I mentioned earlier in our presentation, we've grown our opportunities for our kids with enrichment, but um, there is a question about communication. Perhaps some families aren't aware that we offer box, that we offer French club. We try to be proactive with communication. Um, and then 84% uh, are satisfied with the amount of communication from teachers. Most of our teachers are very proactive. They offer blogs, they offer conferences, they offer newsletters, email, they use the text remind feature. Um, there's been some inconsistencies there. That concludes our presentation. We appreciate your patience. That, that was quite long, but um, we're, we're open to any questions you might have for us. Committee members with questions or comments or observations? Mr. Bailey. I'd like to I just want to say, um, I've been doing this a long time. All of us have been doing this a long time. That was probably the best presentation I've ever got. I mean, it was excellent. Yeah, you did Thank you so I much. Very good. Gary, well I'm sure, is very happy with yep, what well just done. happened. Yeah. The, the deck is spot on. It's not too long. It gives just enough information. You guys all touched on each one of the, it's just perfect. Yeah. And in the five years you've been here, you've done an extraordinary job. Well Thank done. Thank you very much. Thank you. We, um, we've worked very hard together. I will say this is a great group of people to work with, and I mean that. I'm not just saying that. Ms. Hunt. Just to, to piggyback on what Mr. Bailey said, the color coding to say what you've meant, mm -hmm. that I think has made it stand out. Yeah. It's really, really easy to understand and to see where you guys are at. So, and it looks like you've got a lot accomplished, so good job. <laughs> Oh, I just want to say thank you. Mr. Sally, yeah. go ahead. For, just to say thank you for what you do, your dedication to the yeah. students and to the district. Thank you. It's a very good presentation. Dr. Maestas. Well yeah, and you know, we, Scott and I did talk a lot um, about the next school improvement plan because this is mid-cycle. He's phasing his, the school uh, council space on the way out of this plan, and I think one of the, the big highlights is really looking at data and how we really set the um, goals for the future on student achievement and really looking at data and really becoming very fluent on understanding what data tells us and what those benchmarks are for the future. So, you know, Scott's been very proactive in understanding this for himself, for his own knowledge, and I think that that uh, impetus is really kind of pushing uh, understanding of how that, how that works throughout the school. So um, I think tonight is a demonstration of uh, what good planning looks like and how you set your goals for the future. And um, I had the opportunity to teach a class at West um, a couple weeks ago. Oh, I taught great. three classes in a row. Uh, and I tell you, uh, parents that are here tonight and teachers, what a remarkable uh, group of kids that I had the opportunity to be with. They were really, really engaging, um, exceptionally uh, well behaved. Um, you know, the only issue I had the, the entire day was getting the temper paint off my hands. Um, but other than that, I, I just want to tell you that um, what, what a great feeling of, of being in your school and um, feeling the kids just were just so, so, uh, so good. So, so with that, Mr. Williams, thank you for having me for the day. Excellent job. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time and thank you for the feedback. Thank you. <laughs> Committee members, we'll do um, item s seven on our agenda, and after that presentation, we'll take a short break. Great. Yes, tonight we have a um, item 7.1, which is uh, Plymouth South High School Model UN Overnight Field Trip. Uh, these are uh, typical um, requests that we have that come up every, uh, every year, um, and this field trip 
is to New York City, and Liam is here tonight to pre providing any additional information. This is something that our students do every year. It's on the agenda because it's, it's an out-of-state field trip. Mm -hmm. It's to New York. So uh, with that said, uh, I'm not sure if uh, Mr. McGinnis has anything else to add, but it, feel free to jump in and add any other comments you'd like to add. Um, the conference itself really is a really good learning opportunity for the, for the students that they might not otherwise be able to um, uh, get um, in the learning classroom. Um, so what they would be doing is they would be atten attending a conference um, and meeting with students from across, uh, not only the country, but actually across the world that come to New York to attend the conference. And um, what they'd be doing at the conference is discussing actual real world global problems that are existing here. Um, in our current world and current climate. So it's a really good learning opportunity to not only learn about how the, the model, uh, how the actual UN works, um, but at the same time, um, it's a good experience for them to learn about real world political problems that when they graduate from high school, they're gonna have to address um, in the real world. So I, I do think it's a really good learning opportunity. Um, in addition to that, they, they do have the opportunity to go uh, and visit the actual UN headquarters, which is you know, a cool experience in and of itself, but also um, a really good learning opportunity for the students. Okay, Mr. McGinnis, thank you. Questions from committee is it members? Set it just 12 students, or is there room to add students in based on the demand, or will you just cap it um, at 12? There is a certain cap. Um, I'm not sure if exactly is 12, um, just because of the delegate positions that they provide at the conference. Um, 12 right now is the number that I'm kind of anticipating um, in terms of interest, but that can potentially change as well. Okay. Other questions? Ms. Badger. I just want to move in to say that we support the field trip for the Model United Nation in March. I'll second that. English doesn't work. Uh, Mr. Begley. I'll second. I can't even move words. <laughs> didn't oh, she, she moved it. Oh, I didn't. Okay. I moved it. I just didn't know how to use my words at that yeah. moment. <laughs> I don't know. I, and I didn't get any of it, so I'm glad Sorry. everybody else got it. <laughs> Is there a second to whatever she said? I think <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have a motion it's a to Monday. approve this field trip. <laughs> it's been seconded, uh, and we'll take that vote. And everybody has voted in favor. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank McGinnis. Thank you very much. Nice job. And now we have uh, a matter relative to our uh, uh, calendar for next year. Uh, Dr. Maestas. Yes, uh, we have tonight um, a listing of important dates for the proposed 2018-2019 uh, school year. Uh, Dr. Campbell uh, and his office have, has worked over the last two or three weeks to actually comprise this, taking a look at testing dates, taking a look at a lot of information, uh, and this mm -hmm. item is on the agenda tonight for approval. Typically, around this time and even earlier, parents start calling uh, to get graduation dates, uh, to get holiday um, information. So this item is on us, an action item to move forward with the calendar for next year. Okay, committee members, Ms. Badger. I just have a quick question about, usually we have election day off. Is there a reason that we don't have election day? We have election, go ahead, Mr. Dr. Campbell, I'm sorry. Right. November 6th is a full day professional development oh, so day no for school. staff. Oh, it just doesn't say oh. election. I was like, what? No school. <laughs> okay. It says no school. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> we actually have two professional development, full Again, professional development days next year contractually. So that is our second full day professional day. Our first will be the 30th prior to the student's arrival. Oh, okay. So it's not listed here. Perfect. Ms. Burgess. Yes. I, um, it's, I noticed that we're not beginning in August. Mm. Oh, yeah. I was wondering what the reasoning on that. We are not beginning in August. Our yeah. teachers will come back on August 29th, yeah. the first full day of professional yeah. development with our staff, because we keep in mind we have two next year. Our first full day will be building based on the 30th, which is a Thursday, and we're continuing with the four-day weekend, which has been very well received by both Got parents it. 
and 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 staff yeah. so that that would take us to the okay. to the start day of the fourth because of Labor Day. Thank you, L um, Dr. Campbell. Let me follow that up. So um, we'll go. We'll, the first day of classes will be the fourth. Correct. The last day of classes is proposed to be June the fourteenth, which seems to be kind of early, and it sort of surprises me. How do we manage to get out on the fourteenth when we don't start to the fourth? Is it, and Christmas has an extra day this year. The 17th. 17th. 17th? 17th? Did I yes. read that wrong? That's yeah. this year's yes. you're looking at. Back no, I'm not. <laughs> have it right before This me. year's is the 14th. It's Monday the 17th, yeah. last day of school, half day. Yeah. June 2019. It's a Monday. It's a really big Monday. It's a today. great Monday. <laughs> look it's sorry. the beginning of the summer. <laughs> 17th, okay. Yeah, all right. Well, the 14th is a Friday. It's still, the question still stands. Because it, we've only, we're coming in two days later than we normally get out and we're getting out at the same time and Christmas has another day to it next year the Christmas break yeah. so I was wondering how that happened yeah, you understand what I'm saying that's kind of what we have 180 I'm school days in the calendar that just comes that we way counted it about 10 just times just <laughs> okay. it, we're, it, we're, the way the holidays fall we're um, we're taking advantage of having a professional development day on a on a it just <laughs> Okay, I, yeah. I, I believe you. It, I yes. just was caught, it, caught it by does. surprise. The seventeenth. It does. It is a little bit later than this year, I believe. Um, Depending on I mean, the snow. Snow is a factor, but in terms of the one hundred eightieth day okay. of school, okay. it's really only a couple. When you look at, even though it says the fourth, we don't gain many days. This we had a couple of days of school before the the four day we, uh, Labor Day weekend. Two. Um, so. Okay. Two. Yeah. Any other questions? So it's. Ms. Patrick, did you have your hand up? No, I was just saying we had two days. We were just confirming. Okay. This year, right? Yeah. So this yeah. is an action item to approve the calendar as presented. Is there a motion? I'll move it. Ms. Burgess moves it. Mr. Second. Bagley seconds it. Any questions? Okay, let's take the vote. As soon as it comes up. Okay, everybody voted in favor. That has been passed. Thank you very much. Okay, let's take a 10-minute break, and we'll resume at uh, 8.15. Thank you. All right, we're back in session. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a matter pertinent to our budget. Dr. Maestas. Yeah, this evening we have um, an agenda item, 8.1, uh, FY19 operating budget. And um, tonight we are, I'm recommending that we have an amendment to the proposed budget uh, that we, the school committee voted last uh, school committee meeting to take our overall uh, percentage of increase from prior year uh, down to 3%, and that is relative to a reduction in our salary line, uh, which is really um, to be in line with the town meeting, excuse me, with, to be in line with the town's um, allocations for um, staffing for anticipated negotiations. Heard the recommendation, so, Mrs. Burgess. Yeah, I was. Um, I'm just trying to figure out. So the F219 um, superintendent's budget is the 76.51581. The school committee it says. Um, no, it's it's 76.137.363. Is that what we're voting it to? The, where, where am, the school committee's recommended budget for fiscal 2019 oh, would be uh, 97 million yeah. thirty-four thousand five hundred seventy-five dollars. Yeah. Right. Oh, I see it. I see it. I see it. I see it. Okay. So um, I don't see the wording for it though. Wait a minute. It's, on, it's in the. It's in the main thingy. It's in the agenda. Five, seven, uh, uh, other committee members with questions on this budget item. So. It's okay. on the other. Wait, maybe it's got to go back. It's on the agenda, on the bottom. Oh, okay. I got it. Okay. Ms. Burgess, you have the floor. Um, this, that the um, school committee's uh, recommended budget for the fiscal year 2019 be revised and approved in the amount of ninety-seven thousand. Million. Uh, 97 million, I'm sorry, 30, <laughs> $34,575. <laughs> and that is um, due to uh, projected contract settlements. I'll second Seconded that. Seconded by uh, Mr. Bailey. Any questions as to the reduction in the reason? Okay, then I see no hands. We'll take the vote on that one. 
it's not up. Yep, mm -hmm. there it is. Everybody has voted in favor. That's passed unanimously. Thank you. Fundraising activities. Anything to report on that from committee members or central office? We'll pass that item by. School fundraisers? Nothing to be brought up under that item. Reports and proposals from committee members. See, that's why we take a, not been any school. I'm going to take 10 minute breaks more often. <laughs> uh, PYDC. The PYDC uh, meets this Friday morning, right? Yeah. Yes, so, correct. No report. Building committee. Building committee meets this Thursday, Thursday evening. Thursday evening. <laughs> uh, I got a solar project updates. Awesome. Thank you. We, uh, we continue to work with uh, Amoresco, which is our selected vendor. Uh, a couple issues that we're running into, uh, part of the reason for the, 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 the um, say, delay in our timeline is uh, number one is that the state is in between projects, uh, funding mechanisms right now. Uh, this SMART program has not started yet, and the SREC 2 program ended December 31st. So for, um, for a, a financier, a developer to put together a funding proposal, they need to know what the reimbursements are going to be from the state, which is number one. Number two is you may have heard something happened in Washington that they passed some type of uh, tax reform. Mm -hmm. And um, that, that includes a reduction in corporate taxes, as, you, as you're aware of. That, will imp that impacts uh, proposals for, um, for the solar developers. So in, in our favor, it should bring a more beneficial price uh, for, for the school district. Mm -hmm. so, they're working on that. Um, also, in the tax reform bill, um, solar developers used to be able to write off 50 percent in the first year of depreciation. They're now able to write off 100 percent depreciation wow. of the asset. So again, that affects, affects the um, net present value of the funding models. So we're working with, uh, it's all very new. I mean, we're only into January, uh, the first week in January. So that's part of the reason that the financing uh, companies are, are looking at, uh, you know, putting this all together, so it's taking a little bit of time. Any questions for Mr. Costin? Uh, I, I, you probably can you probably can't answer it, but is it, this could be a long delay? It, it, I'll answer it in the sense that I don't think we'll meet our original targets where we hope to have the lighting up by March 31st. So that's something that we're, we're um, addressing in our proposals and our, our project schedule. So it will yeah. be after the fields are finished. Mr. Bagley. But, but the good news is it might cost us a lot less than we It, it might be more favorable. <laughs> um, that's, what, that's what we're hoping. Conservative. I'll keep my hopes no, down, under be control. Hopefully more favorable. <laughs> okay. Any other nice questions? Nice to go back to time? town meeting with uh, <laughs> returning <laughs> some <something. laughs> really have your hopes up high. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, homeschooling. Yes, tonight we have one homeschool plan that's been reviewed by Dr. Halpin's office and has met the necessary guidelines for our homeschool plans, and I recommend approval. Mr. Bagley. I'll make the motion to accept it. Okay, we have a motion to accept. Mrs. Burgess is the second. Um, questions? Okay, let us take the vote then. Oh, I might not. I'm sorry. What happened there? I don't know whether I'm. I'm I voted yes and then it went away. Hold on one second. Okay. It moves on. It's on. Hold on. Oh, there it is. Table, that's why it moved on. Okay. All right. We'll have to read on that Watch it. Okay. All right. Everybody vote in favor. Thank you. We're good. Okay, good. I wasn't on the right line. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. Okay. The next be agenda item is is our uh, warrants. Yeah. Ms. Hunt. Okay, whereas the school committee members have been provided with a copy of the cost center transfer and transaction summary report and the warrant review <coughs> for review, I move that the Plymouth School Committee accept and approve the report and accounts payable warrant number S011118 
dated January 11, 2018, in the amount of $1,022,128.20 as presented. There's a motion, second by Mr. Shelley. On a question to the motion? Okay, the vote, please. Okay, that passes, 11.2. There we go. It's unanimous. Whereas <clears throat> school committee members have been provided with a copy of the cost center transfer and transaction summary report and the warrant for review, I move that the Plymouth School Committee accept and approve the report and accounts payable warrant number S122817, dated December 28, 2017, in the amount of 242000 $577.84 as presented. Seconded by Ms. Ms. Badger. Questions? Okay, please vote. We're moving now, boy. <laughs> We're moving. Yeah, yeah. We have the minutes of November the 20th. I couldn't pull them up. I, we couldn't pull them up. No. Okay, so we'll hold that off. Okay, we are really moving now. <laughs> Obsolete <laughs> equipment. <laughs> yes, tonight we have uh, one item at Plymouth North High School, and this is a fellow's shredder. It is beyond repair, and um, it is not, uh, there's, there's no sense in trying to repair it. Discard. I'll move the not uh, disposal equipment. Ms. Burgess moves to dispose the equipment as recommended. Mr. Selly is the uh, rest second on that one. Any questions? Okay, let's vote. Okay, that's passed. And the other one? At PCIS, uh, we have a number of books at PCIS for disposal. And uh, there is a, a large list, and this is just um, calling of the books and in the library, Mita Center. So. These would be donated to an organization that we have supported in the past, uh, but it's really uh, weeding of materials and out, out of date, out of print uh, okay. documents, so, books. So we need a motion to donate these books. Mr. Morgan? I'll make a motion to dispose of books as outlined. Okay, seconded by Ms. Badger. Any questions? Seeing none, we can vote for it. Everybody voted in favor of that? Okay. Is there any other business that come before the committee? Seeing no hands, we stand adjourned. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>